5-8, graphing absolute value functions. So our objective here is to graph an absolute value function and to translate the graph of an absolute value function. And we can quickly graph the quickly graph absolute value equations by shifting the graph of y is equal to the absolute value of x. An absolute value function has a v-shaped graph that opens up or down. The parent function for the family of absolute value functions is y is equal to the absolute value of x. A translation is a shift of the graph horizontally, vertically, or both. The result is a graph of the same size and shape, but in a different position. So let's start this by looking at the parent absolute value function and what it actually looks like. So if I start with my function, y is equal to the absolute value of x, anytime I want to make a graph, and if I'm not sure what it looks like, I'm going to make a table. So let's plug in negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3 into my function. So if I plug negative 3 in for x, I just take the absolute value of negative 3 is going to be positive 3. Positive 2, positive 1, absolute value of 0 is 0, and for positive numbers we just get our same thing. So if I wanted to plot these points then, I would go negative 3, positive 3, negative 2, positive 2, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, and 3, 3. And you can see that my graph is starting to look like a V. And if I graph the whole thing, I get a graph that looks kind of like a V. Okay. Now, what we're going to do with this function is, whoops, is we are going to shift it. We are going to take this graph and we're going to move it up, down, left, and right. Okay, That's the whole graph, but you get the idea. So we're going to take these this absolute value function shifted up, down, left, and right. It's going to keep the same shape, but it's going to start in a different position. Its vertex is going to be in different position, and all the other things are going to be in different positions. So below is the graph of my parent function, y is equal to the absolute value of x, and y is equal to the absolute value of x minus 2. Notice here my vertex is 0, 0. Here my vertex is 0 negative 2. So notice that if I were to take this graph, pick it up, that didn't work, pick it up and shift it down to, I would then get the same graph over here. Okay, So shift down to, and I have my function on the right. How is the graph at the right related to the graph of the absolute value of x? Well, it shifted up 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so this graph just shifted up 4. So what is the domain and range of each function in problem 1? Okay, so let's go back up here. So my domain for, let's look at my parent function. The domain for the parent function is how far left does it go, how far right does it go. The domain for the parent function is all real numbers because it never stops. That's what those arrows mean. It keeps going right, it keeps going left. However, the range is limited. The range, this is the lowest the function ever gets. So we can say that y has to be greater than or equal to 0. My domain doesn't change here. It's still going to be all real numbers, but my range does change. My range is now going to be y is greater than or equal to negative 2. Because okay? this graph goes up from negative 2. So the graph of the absolute value of x plus k is a translation of the absolute value of x. Let k be a positive number then absolute value of x plus k translates the graph up k units, while absolute value of x minus k translates the graph down k units. So 
what we're doing is we're looking at that number right there. And we can see that here, that negative 2 shifted the graph down. And the formula for this graph would have been y is equal to the absolute value of x plus 4. So that 4 shifted the graph up 4 units. Okay. So when we look at this graph right here, y is equal to the absolute value of x plus 2, I could, if I wanted to, I could make a table, plug in all the numbers, and get my answers. Okay. Or I could say, well, I know that that point zero zero is on the parent function. Absolute value of y is equal, or sorry, y is equal to the absolute value of x. So that means if I shift it up to, that point is on my new function. One, one was on the parent function. Shift that up, shift that up, shift it up. And the same thing the other way. Okay, so now I was able to graph this function without having to make a whole table, without having to go through any of, uh, without having to go through a lot of work. For this one, now that, oops, this number right there will shift my graph down seven. And again, that's all that has changed from the parent function. So I get a nice couple lines, all with a with a slope, positive slope of one and a slope of negative one, right, to make this graph of this function. Now, if you can't do that, if you don't like that, of course, making a table is fine. If we plug zero into this function, we get the absolute value of zero minus seven is negative seven. And we can see that's our first point. If I plug one in, I would get one minus seven. That would be negative six. Okay. So you can see that these points will be produced when we plug these numbers into the function. The graphs below show what happens when you graph y is equal to the absolute value of x plus two and x minus two. This is a little bit different because this function, the red function right there, is the graph of absolute value of x plus 2. And this is the graph of the absolute value of x minus 2. So while adding a number to the outside of the absolute value shifts it up and subtracting a number shifts it down, that's the opposite of what happens if you do it inside the function. So for a positive number h, x plus h translates the graph to the left and x minus h transfer, translates the graph to the right. It seems to be a little counterintuitive, but if we plug in numbers, we can see that this actually works. So let's try this. Let's make a table, and let's plug in numbers. Normally, my first point, the vertex point, would be 0, comma 0. So if I plug in 0, I would get the absolute value of x plus 5. Okay, so the absolute value of 0 plus 5 is 5. So that would be 0, comma, 5. Well, that doesn't look like it would be my vertex point. So let's plug in a negative number. Okay, so if I plug in a negative number, I would get negative 1 plus 5. That would be the absolute value of 4. If I plug in negative 2, that would be that would be 3. Then negative 3, that would be 2. Negative 4, that would be 1. And negative 5, finally I get 0. Now when I plug in negative 6, negative 6 plus 5 is a negative 1. The absolute value of negative 1 is a positive 1. So now you see we're going back up. So my graph is going boom, 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 and then back up. And I can see that by adding 5, I actually shifted the graph 5 to the left. This one, if I subtract 5, it's going to shift it 5 to the right. So now we can make a nice, quick, easy graph just like that.
Yikes. Now, this does get more complicated for uh, absolute value functions that do other things, like have a number in the front or have some sort of changed uh, in number in the front here or a number inside the absolute value in front of x. That would change the slope, and that becomes a little bit different, something we'll look at later. The absolute value function is an example of something called a piecewise function. A piecewise function is a function that has different rules for different parts of its domain. The rules for this part and the rules for this part are different. This part looks like a line that's going up. This part that looks like a line that's going down. And in fact, basically all we did was take this part of the line that would have been negative and we made it positive, which is sort of what the absolute value function actually does. Okay. For example, when x is greater than 0, the absolute value of x is equal to x. When x is less than 0, the absolute value of x is equal to negative x. It's going down and then it's going back up. That's what that's saying. Another example of a piecewise function is a step function. A step function is a function that pairs every number in an interval with a single value. The graph of a step function looks like a step, looks like the steps of a staircase. One, two, three, just going up the steps. Okay. Each piece of the graph is a horizontal segment that is missing its right endpoint indicated by an open circle. Because if it was closed, it would fail the vertical line test and not be a function anymore. So this function is going to be defined from there, straight open circle to there. Okay. So a school charter, a school will charter buses so that the student body can attend a football game. Each bus holds a maximum of 60 students. To make a graph that models the relationship between the number of students X that go to the game by bus and the number of buses that are needed. Okay, so this graph is only going to have one quadrant because we don't need a negative, we can't have a negative number of people. So this is going to be number of students. And let's go, all right, we got zero. Uh, whoops, 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 zero, 60, 120, 180, and so on. Okay. Then the number of buses, one buses, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So if there's zero people going, you don't need any buses. As soon as there's one kid who wants to go, you need a bus. And we're going to have the same number of buses up until 60 people. As soon as we have more than 60, we now need another bus. So it's that at 60 people, we don't need two buses. At 60 people, we still need one bus, but at 61 people, or anything less than that, we need a, or anything more than that, we need a second bus. All the way up to 120, then you need a third bus, then you need a fourth bus, and then a fifth bus, and then so on and so on. And we have our step function that keeps stepping higher and higher and higher for every uh, extra bus that we need. Okay. So last got a problem. Make a graph that models the relationship between the number of students X that go to the game by bus and the number of buses Y that are needed if each hold has a maximum of 50. Same idea. So we're going to get 0, 50, 100, 150, 1, 2, 3. This is students. This is bus. Okay. So 0 people, 0 buses. To 50 to 100, and then to 150. Okay, and then we have our, whoops, missed the step, step, step. So, how is the graph of y is equal to the absolute value of x minus 8 different than the graph of absolute value of x? It is shifted 8 down. Same shape, 
shifted A down. What is the equation for the translation nine units up? That would be y is equal to the absolute value of x plus nine. That one shifted left seven. How are the graphs of x minus four and x, uh, absolute value of x minus four and the absolute value of x minus four the same? They're both the same shape. They're both Vs. They both have just the plane x, which means they have a slope of one and negative one on each piece of the absolute value. And how are they different? This one is shifted down four. This one is shifted right four. A student is graphing the equation absolute value of x minus 10 and translates the graph 10 units to the left. Minus means translates it translate it 10 units to the right, not the left. And that was 5-8, graphing absolute value functions.